If you have been following the channel for a while, you might remember this website. We already broke down some of the standout animations from it, like this section where the project cards stack up with staggered text reveal animations, and this one with animated columns that shift and snap into place as new content comes into view. I was really impressed with this site for how creatively it put together these interactive concepts. Super thoughtful work. But there was still one more animation I had planned to cover this amazing loading sequence, followed by a slick landing page reveal. After working on a few intense builds in recent videos, I was looking for something a little more relaxed. So this felt like the perfect time to rebuild this reveal concept from scratch. A few of you also mentioned in the comments that these smaller focused animations tend to work better for learning the basics of GSAP, especially compared to the more complex builds. So over the weekend, I spent a few hours putting together this version of the animation. It's built using just the fundamentals, GSAP timeline and a bit of split text. In today's video, I'll walk you through how to build this kind of animation using plain HTML, CSS and GSAP. If you find these videos helpful, don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to access the source code for this project, plus hundreds of other similar micro projects and a brand new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's jump into the code. Let's start by setting up the HTML structure. First, we'll create the preloader overlay. This includes three parts, one for the progress animation, one for the mask effect and one for the actual preloader content. Inside the preloader progress div, I am adding another div called preloader progress bar. This is what will animate later to show that horizontal white filler you saw in the demo using a simple scale animation from left to right. Just below that, we'll drop in a heading for the logo. So I'm adding a new div with the class preloader logo and placing an h1 inside with some text. Next, we have the preloader mask. This one's just an empty div for now. We'll use CSS later to apply the actual mask effect on this, which creates that soft, bell shaped window reveal. After that, the preloader content is where we'll put any text or elements we want to display during the loading animation. Here, I'm adding a div for the footer and placing some dummy text inside. Just placeholder text for now, but you can swap it with anything you want to show while the page is loading. That's all we need for the preloader. Now let's move on to the main website content. This is the part that becomes visible once the loading animation is finished. First, I'm adding a wrapper div with the class container. This will hold everything else on the page. Inside that, I'm adding a new section with the class hero. This is going to be our landing section. Within the hero, I'll add another div called hero inner. We'll use this later to apply a rounded border on the entire section, kind of like a card style container. Now let's set up the visual background. I'm creating a div called hero image and placing an image tag inside it. This is the full screen background image that sits behind all the content. Next comes the main content area. For that, I'm adding a div with the class hero content. Inside that, the first thing I'm placing is a header with an h1 inside. This is going to be the big text that appears in the top left corner when the page loads. Right after that, I'll add two button wrappers, one for contact and one for menu. I'm giving them classes contact button and menu button. Each of them has a label and an icon. These are just placeholder elements for now. We are not focusing too much on the functionality here. You can replace these later with actual links or components. And finally, we'll set up the footer area inside the hero. I'm adding a div called hero footer and dropping an h3 along with a paragraph with some more dummy copy. That's pretty much it for the structure. Now that we have the base layout ready, we'll jump into the styling next. At the very top, I'm importing a Google font. I'm using Host Grotesk for this project. It's a clean, modern sans serif that feels natural and works well with minimal design. Next, I'm setting up some CSS variables inside the root selector. These will define our base color palette. We'll be using these as our base colors throughout the layout. One dark, one slightly lighter, and one for highlights and text. Then I'm doing a basic reset, removing margin and padding, and setting box sizing to border box. For the body, I'm applying the host grotesque font we just imported. Images are set to fill their containers completely using width and height at 100% and I'm setting object width to cover so they always maintain aspect ratio without stretching. Now onto the main layout, the container spans the full width and height of the page. We are giving it relative positioning so we can absolutely position elements inside it later in case if needed. The hero section also takes up the full screen. I am setting height to 100 viewport height, adding a bit of padding and using our darkest background color. Inside that, we have hero inner. This is the main wrapper for all content in the hero. It's set to full width and height. It has a large rounded corners. I'm also setting overflow to hidden, so animations inside don't bleed out. 
The background image sits inside the hero image. Its absolutely position fills the full area and is scaled up slightly. We'll also mark it for GPU acceleration using Will Change Transform. Then comes the hero content. This sits above the image, takes up the same space, and also adds some inner padding. All the text inside is colored in a light tone for contrast. The header H1 is a large, bold title with tight line spacing and a bit of negative letter spacing to tighten things up. At the bottom of the hero section, we have the hero footer. It's positioned absolutely, spread across the full width and aligned to the bottom. It uses flexbox to space out its children and align them to the base. The H3 inside the footer sits on the left. It's medium sized and restricted to a portion of the width. There is also a paragraph on the right, aligned to the end and faded out slightly for subtlety. Now, next we have two buttons. One is the contact button placed at the top right. The other is the menu button centered along the bottom. Both buttons used the shared button class. They are horizontally padded, rounded and styled with a light background and dark text. They also have a transform hint for smoother animation. Inside each button is a circular icon. It's centered, has an inverse color scheme and is slightly larger than the surrounding text. The button label uses a slightly smaller font and a tighter line height to keep things compact. Next, we move into the preloader. We are using three elements, a progress layer, a mask and some content, all fixed to cover the screen and set to ignore pointer interactions. The progress layer sits on top and fills the screen with a dark color. It also has a will change opacity hint since we'll animate it later. Inside that is a progress bar. It's centered horizontally, stretches vertically and starts at zero scale from the left side. We'll animate that scale X value to fill the bar as loading progresses. Then we have the logo. It's placed at the center of the screen using translate positioning. It's white, blends with the background using mix blend both difference and has a clean font style. Next is the preloader mask. This is the key visual layer in the reveal. It has a solid dark background and we apply a custom mask. First, a full inner gradient that acts as a base and mainly an SVG graphic positioned at the center which is a simple pill like shape I exported from Figma. We then use mask composite subtract which punches that shape out of the gradient to create a cutout effect. It's marked with will change transform since we'll animate it during the reveal. The final piece of the preloader is the content layer. This is stacked above the others and contains the footer text. The footer itself is centered at the bottom of the screen and set to a fixed width. The text is white and slightly transparent to give it a soft presence. We also have line and character classes here. These are used for animating individual lines or characters of the text. They have some padding on the bottom and a negative margin on top just to clear out the extra space the font has to keep them tight. And they are also marked with will change transform so they animate smoothly. Now a few mobile adjustments. On smaller screens, the inner hero border radius is slightly reduced. The main header is absolutely centered, placed in the middle of the screen and scaled down to fit better. We also reset the letter spacing and center align the text. The footer switches to a vertical layout, stacks its children with spacing and aligns them to the left. We we'll shrink the heading inside the footer slightly and make sure both text blocks stretch full width.
The menu button moves to the top left and resets its horizontal transform. The progress bars match the full width now and is aligned from the left. The logo text size scales down a bit to fit smaller viewports. The mask SVG is also scaled up slightly to fill more of the screen. And finally, the preloader footer widens to take up more space on small screens. That's everything for the CSS. Now let's move on to the JavaScript. At the top of the file, I'm importing GSAP, which is our core animation library. Right after that, I'm importing the split text plugin from GSAP. This plugin allows us to break text into individual characters, words, and lines. Next, we register the split text plugin. This step is required, so GSAP knows we'll be using split text later on in the project. Now we wait for all web fonts to finish loading. This ensures that when we split and animate text later, the font is already applied. Otherwise, things can shift around and animate incorrectly as we are using split text if the fonts load too late. Inside the callback, we define a function called create split texts. This is a helper function that accepts a list of elements we want to split. We start by creating an empty object called splits. We'll use this to store all our processed text elements for animations later. Then we loop through the provided list of elements using for each. Each item in the list has a key, a selector, and a type. The key is just a label for reference. The selector points to the actual DOM element we want to split, and the type tells us whether we want to split it into characters, words, or lines. Inside the loop, we create a config object for each element. We pass both type and mask as the same value. This tells the plugin how to break up the text visually. Then we add an extra line to assign a custom class to the split parts. If we are splitting into characters, we assign a character class. If we are splitting into lines, we assign a line class. Finally, we use the create function with the selector and config and store the result in our split object under the corresponding key. Once we finish processing all elements, the function returns the entire split object, which now contains all the text elements ready to animate. Now that we have defined the create split text function, let's actually use it. I'm setting up an array of text elements we want to split. Each one includes a reference key a CSS selector and the type of split we want, either characters or lines. We are splitting the logo heading into individual characters. The footer text below, it is being split into lines. Same thing with the main hero header, which gets split into characters. And for both text blocks in the hero footer, the subheading in the paragraph, we are splitting those into lines as well. Finally, we are also splitting the label inside the button into lines. All of these selectors correspond to elements we have already styled in our CSS. We are just preparing them here so they are ready for animation. We pass this array into the create split text function we wrote earlier. This gives us back a full set of split text objects which we store in a constant called splits. Next, we are setting up the initial animation states for all those elements. First, the characters inside the logo are moved completely off screen to the right. This is done by shifting them horizontally so they are not visible yet. Then, all the other lines and characters including the hero header, the footer text, and the button labels are moved vertically downward off screen, again setting them up to animate later. We are also hiding the button entirely at the start. The circle icon inside the button is clipped down to zero using a circular mask and the button itself is scaled down to nothing so it won't be visible when the page loads. All of this is just prep work. Nothing is animating yet but we have now staged everything so it's ready to be revealed in sequence using GSAP timelines. Let's move on to building the timeline next. Let's add the progress bar animation and build out the full timeline. We start by defining a helper function called animate progress. This creates a short timeline that gradually scales the loading bar. Inside this function, we define a total of five animation steps. These steps act like fake progress milestones that move the bar forward in small jumps. Each jump increases the width of the loading bar by a random amount, but we make sure the final step always hits full progress. This randomness helps avoid a flat, linear feel. Instead, it feels more natural and human, like a system checking tasks behind the scenes. The scale value is applied using scale x, which controls how wide the bar grows. Each jump has its own duration, calculated by dividing the total animation time equally across the steps. After defining this helper, we create our main animation timeline. We give it a small delay before anything starts animating. Now, the first thing we animate is the logo characters. They slide in from the right, one after the other, using a staggered delay to make the sequence feel more fluid. Right after that, the footer text below the logo animates in from the bottom, again line by line. We start this a bit earlier than usual by using a time label offset. So the logo and footer animates together, creating a compact 
intro moment. As these two pieces animate in, we also run the progress bar animation by calling our animate progress function. This plays at the same time as the text transitions. Once that completes, we update the background color of the progress overlay. This is because earlier we gave the progress bar a smaller width, just enough to match the initial mask width. And we set the highlight color only on the bar itself, not the entire overlay. Now that we are about to scale up the mask, we want the full background behind it to appear consistently white. So the entire progress area blends seamlessly during the reveal. By changing the background color of the parent container, we make sure the expanding mask doesn't reveal a lighter patch in the middle. It all stays visually unified as the animation moves forward. Then we reverse everything we just did. The logo characters slide out to the left and the footer text moves upward off mask, all with the same easing and staggered as before. We then fade out the entire progress overlay to zero opacity, revealing the background behind it. At the same time, we scale up the mask dramatically. This creates a burst effect that clears the screen and transitions us fully into the hero section. We also scale down the hero image from its zoomed in state back to its original size, creating sort of a parallax effect. After the transition completes, we reveal the hero heading characters from below, one by one with a quick stagger. We trigger this slightly early, so the reveal overlaps with the mask transition. Next, we animate in the subheading and paragraph inside the hero footer. Each line rises up, just like we did with the earlier footer. Lastly, we bring in the buttons. They scale up smoothly into place. As soon as the buttons begin to appear, we also reveal the circular icon inside them using a clip part transition. This effect makes the icons feel like they expand out from the center. At the same time, the button label's text slide up line by line. And with that, our full hero entrance animation is complete, each part flowing smoothly into the next. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.